so Tony Schiavone, in another of the highlights of the night, was in the ring with Tully Blanchard and introduced Conan. I get they couldn't figure out music for Tully. Um, so he just had to be in the ring. And, but at first, when I saw this, I thought, wait a minute, okay, Tully's in the ring, and then here's Conan. I wrote, why is this happening? Because I'm like, where did this come from? And then I wrote, they were talking about the cameo appearance at the stadium fight deal, football field fuckery too. Was that not it? Where Conan was in the in the nightclub and and play it was the DJ. This was weeks and weeks ago, right? Correct. That's the last time he's been on the show. Yes, and the right? only, only other time before that that I remember was the Vegas skits that the Inner Circle did. Which was uh, yeah, last yeah. fall. Yeah. So, but suddenly they have to be a Conan speaking for Proud and Powerful, which is a name that they have not used for Santana and Ortiz in months, unless I have missed something, correct? They haven't used that name, I think, in well over a year. So he, they, and Conan has not been affiliated with them because they are in the dinner circle, Jericho's group. And Tully is obviously the manager for the Pinochle, which is now <laughs> now the top heel group. So I was like, why the fuck are they coming face to face? What do they have to talk about here? Well, was Conan associated with them? I mean, because they were the second LAX, kind of like you had two scuffling hillbillies. Like you yes. had two LAXs that had nothing to do with each other member-wise, but was Conan involved with LAX? Yeah, when they were yes, in? but not on this television. No, on a television that no one watched. That, but anyway, that's so the point is, I said, why the fuck is this happening? Remember, like at Always Sunny in Philadelphia, they would have scenes where if somebody would say, what, what is happening? Um, so, uh, again, the booking and formatting leaves much to be desired, but at least we got Conan's promo, which I may have enjoyed more than anything on this fucking lackluster program in a year and a half because he had some shit that he had worked up and saved up and he fucking got it out it's been, his go home line learn spanish you'll need it to talk to your grandkids but just the the the, the where the men are men and the sheep are scared i mean it's some old southern shit and then conan's witty shit and then the fucking poor tully he didn't get in any way personal he just had threatened to have conan beaten up uh i don't know whether they just said call it in the ring and Tully was not ready for the onslaught, but he lost that fucking debate. You know, I don't know how you score it, but I would say whatever to owe. So I enjoyed fucking Conan, uh, but his promo, if, if we could have just not seen them come to the ring or not had any dwelling on why that they shouldn't be having this face to face and they had just played the promo before anybody walked out, it was the best thing on the show. But then it goes back to fucking stupid again because they made goddamn... Tully threatened to call out his boys and, and just kick the shit out of Conan and leave him laying there broke, busted, and disgusted. But Conan said, no, 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 because I got my guys ready and I've got, you know, fucking here, here they come and what is supposedly Santana and Ortiz is obviously two flat-footed white boys in track suits and fucking bandanas and baseball caps. What They were covered from head to toe. And it's obviously not Conan's guys. Besides, even if, if you could say, okay, they mugged them in the back and, and grabbed their clothing and stole their identity... That's when fucking Tully says, wait a minute, look at this video. And it's Santana and Ortiz on the screen in the back, laid out with shit laying on top of them, groaning. And they're not, they're dressed as themselves. And then Conan turns around and realizes that these two guys that aren't even dressed like the, his motherfuckers, the last time he saw them in this building. Do you see what I'm getting at here? <sighs> And they jump Conan and give him a spike pile driver with all the health issues he's had. How much is, is anybody going to threaten to stab FTR 
and Tully Blanchard. Uh, are they going to get that much heat for Spike Piledrive and Conan, even if they are fantastic workers and Conan's going to take that bump when he's had everything in his body replaced? How much heat are they going to get for that? They're not going to get any heat. And, and, and how does, how, why did they make Conan poor Conan comes out there and gives them a little promo class in the fucking 90 seconds they give him. And they've got to make him look like a goddamn, a maroon, an imbecile. When these two guys that obviously aren't his guys come out, but he can't react to that until they reveal on the screen, his two guys are complete fucking phonies and are laying there on purpose in the back. So. It's a nice promo for a very flimsy reason that is put on the program and ends with a goddamn ridiculously phony angle. Your thoughts? I'm going to be in the minority. I didn't like the promo, and I know everyone else did. But I'm not a fan of Conan as a talker at all and never have been you didn't like that material on nah. this program i thought it was or... lame i thought it was I, when you repeat but material i've you... heard before i think it's lame but at least you knew it was his it wasn't yeah. these guys memorizing this shit and going out and fucking telling it with a goddamn blank hostage look on their face i wasn't crazy about it with that said another promo that just can't happen without an interruption Someone has to interrupt almost every promo. Uh, the Bucks got away with a promo earlier. I can congratulate them. It's almost as if they were executive vice presidents over there. It's almost like they have some type of control. Some over type of pull. Things. Put our matches on before the shitty stuff and make sure no one comes in during our bad promos. Sounds like they got the deal of the century. <laughs> but, you know, another beat down. I'm done with the inner circle fucking pinnacle. I want to see FTR versus... I guess we call him proud and powerful again. I, I would just like them to have a match. Just have a match. <laughs> just one, just a regular tag team match. No interference or minimal managerial interference. That makes sense. A finish. And we all move on with our lives. I got to be on. This is like the week. It, it's been coming the last several weeks. I'm just like done with AEW. I don't enjoy it at all. Oh, no, no. I, oh, no, no. I used to be able to at least have a perverse joy in watching the really, really awful shit. But these shows are awful to get through. And he's featuring more and more of just the worst people. And I don't think Tony Khan has any idea what the fuck he's doing, no matter how much he scripted out as a kid playing with himself in his bedroom. Hey, I don't fucking think he has any idea what the fuck he's doing. And the show's booked horribly. And I hate it. I just want to say that here. I, the, the last few weeks, I've grown to hate this watching this show. <laughs> we'll see if Wednesdays change things. If all of a sudden it's, hey, let's let's do some good stuff. But this show's so fucking free bad. and easy, free and easy. You know what? Uh, uh, the next uh, talent roster addition to the women's division in AEW, Tony Khan's going to bring in the four sisters on Thumb Street. He'll put all. They'll all be baby faces. <laughs> 